Before we jump straight into the video, I'm going to give a quick disclaimer because I know that there are some young people in my audience. This video contains the nude male and female forms, so this is a boob warning and a willy warning. <laughs> I mean, let's not kid ourselves, this disclaimer is more for the parents and for me to have said that I said it, rather than the kids, because I know if I was a kid watching this I'd be like, ooh, <laughs> boobs. <laughs> G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Draw with Jazza, I'm Jazza and today I'm going to be doing a video collaboration with an amazing YouTuber, his name is Proko and he creates loads of amazing tutorials that cover a lot of fine art stuff, particularly anatomy, structural things about the human body, shading, lighting and all this stuff. There's a link on the screen and in the description, please go check out his stuff and subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. If I were to say three things I love most about his YouTube channel, the first would be that his video quality is amazing and there's not much like it on YouTube when it comes to fine arts and it's all very well planned out and well executed. The second is that this guy knows his stuff and he's a great illustrator and artist. And the third thing is something I think a lot of you will enjoy and something I think we share a little bit in common is that he has quite a bit of a tongue-in-cheek approach to education sometimes which is really entertaining. Look, I'm a girl too. No. Okay, so we're back in Photoshop and now that we're all quite sure that all of the immature people who can't handle the nude male and female figures are gone, we can get rid of these flowers. <gasps> Oh my god! Joking aside, and in all seriousness, learning to draw people requires learning to draw the human body, and all the bits and bobs are part of the human body, so don't freak out about it. It's all good. So right in the nick of time for Halloween, Proko has created this amazing image here of Frankenstein's bride and Frankenstein, and we decided to go about this in a way that we could both sort of complete a part of the image. And so what Proko has done is create the forms of these people as well as the scene. If you head over to his channel right now, you can see his part of the collaboration and he explores a lot of different stuff. He goes through creating the value study, which uh, let me bring up, you can see here, sort of an exploration and precursor to creating the final image. And also, as you can see, Frankenstein's bride is clothed here uh, even we can't see Frankenstein himself is all you know shrouded in shadow but today I'm gonna take on the cloth side of things we're gonna be looking at cloth of different kinds how we can put outfits and costumes on people and how we can also incorporate the poses and motion of this image that we're working with into the cloth and the folds of the clothing which can be a bit tricky at times and we're gonna find different methods and techniques that will make that a bit easier for you and the first thing I want to talk about is using reference reference images. We're going to use references for both of them and that doesn't mean we're going to copy anything per se, but we need to know what outfits they're wearing first and foremost. And secondly, this is also helpful for us in understanding the type of material, like is it elegant or translucent? Does it move and fold a lot or is it thick and firm? So when I Google Frankenstein's bride, this is what comes up. As you can see, the image that Proko made obviously uses this sort of character style. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and a few other images and bring them into Photoshop so I can have them in there as a reference. So here I have my references in the top right corner. I've just made a bit of an extra space on the right of the screen uh, cut, temporarily covered up half the image with white so I can just scribble on it and play around a bit as I sort of block out how the cloth and the costume is going to look on our Frankenstein's bride. So I'm going to bring up a quick little character template I have here that I'm just going to be using as a bit of a base to figure out the costume. And as you can see there's only really two main parts of her costume. They're the armbands that I mentioned and then the large long cloth that sort of drapes over her shoulders and at the front and back of her just sort of drapes down. So here's the result of my costume template, I suppose you could call it, and that just gives me a really clear reference that I can follow when drawing it on my uh, image here that I'm going to be drawing the outfit on. The, th the way to think about clothing is similar to how you might think about drawing hair. It's really ineffective to jump in and start drawing long flowing hair one piece of hair at a time, and I think a lot of people find cloth really intimidating because there can be so many folds and it might be really confusing or, or organic to draw, but the reality is if you block in the broader areas of where the mass gathers and sits, then add the folds and different details later, it goes much smoother. And before we do that, I actually want to block out some motion because our character here looks like she's sort of mid-dance. Her pose isn't a comfortable standing pose, but it definitely looks like she could be in motion and we can accentuate that so much with clothing in a way that 
really isn't able to happen without it because her hair isn't long and flowing. Uh, it's just the, the pose itself which is alluding to the motion, but it's the clothing that's going to accentuate that. So to make it nice and clear for us, I'm going to bring down the opacity of the original drawing so that everything I draw on top is going to be really clear. And I'm going to grab my construction pencil, which is a blue, so it's going to stand out more. Um, for those of you who are interested, I'm using my own custom Photoshop brushes. I have them all laid out here in my Photoshop UI. I drew the reference here with my pencil brushes and I use them for everything. So if you see anything I've made in Photoshop, I use those brushes. Feel free to check them out. I'll put the link on the screen and in the description. So using my construction pencil, I'm just going to start off by figuring out some lines of motion. Now the first question I'm going to ask is, is she spinning and rotating in a clockwise or in a counterclockwise way? There are a few clues we can follow to uh, pick the most realistic one based on the drawing here. It's actually quite clear that her leg is, is lifting and leading our uh, motion here. So following that as our first clue, if we were to draw boxes around different parts of the body, you can see that the pelvis is facing the right of the image most and more so than the torso, which is still facing the right of the image, but it's sort of mid-turn. It's still sort of facing forwards and a little bit more to us. And then following this trend going up to the head, if we were to draw the head as a box, it is actually facing in the opposite direction. And this is a, uh, a very clear way to see where the motion of the pose is going. We have everything kind of following along through the legs and the arm is actually being dragged back slightly and uh, being pulled back behind her motion. So we know that based on that, she's dancing in a counterclockwise motion with her right leg lifted and ready to lead the, uh, the motion. So knowing this and having a reference for the clothing itself, I'm going to start blocking out the clothing on our character here. And I'm going to start off with the arms because they're going to be the most simple. There's going to be next to no motion in the cloth on the arms just because it's so tightly wrapped around the arms themselves. I can just simply sketch in a bit of an outline slightly thicker than the limbs that are drawn. And the reason I'm drawing them slightly thicker is simply because the material adds a little bit of thickness, but not too much. And I can start to create some lines that are going to act as the, uh, the bandages that are wrapped around her arms. And I'm trying to keep them a bit organic. I'm not just going with, you know, some evenly drawn apart lines. I'm making sure to have some a little further apart than others, have some overlap and have them sometimes follow the same angle. We might have two next to each other nice and neat and then sometimes have one on a different angle further apart and have them sort of oppose each other sort of intermittently. The other cool thing about having material wrapped around the arms like this is we get to really accentuate the three-dimensional aspect of her figure. We're essentially creating a wireframe around her arms which makes them look more tangible. I tend to find that the easiest way to think about drawing cloth, especially when it's such a large area of cloth like this covering so much of the body, is to start off by drawing the cloth on the anchor points, essentially where the cloth is resting. And that is going to be on her shoulders and on her upper chest. So you can see that if you sort of zoomed into this, the, uh, the collar shape is this almost square-like shape around the, the neck or around the collarbone. So I'm going to just roughly sketch that in and then the cloth is going to follow along and sit on the upper chest. Now her outfit is very long and uh, this area of cloth here is probably going to be quite heavy and pulled down. So if I were to create a layer underneath this and just use a different color for the sake of example and just shade in roughly where the cloth will be holding the most pressure and uh, bearing the most weight, it's going to be there on the shoulders and here on the chest, all the way up until we get to the edge here, which is so, it sort of creates this line between the nipples and then pulls back up to the armpit and then fades out. Now the reason I've outlined this is it sort of means that the cloth isn't going to have much distortion here because it's really going to be pulled out in a lot of directions, meaning that there's really no room for there to be loose cloth or folds, meaning we don't draw any additional lines. But it's from here that the cloth starts to flow a little bit more freely and with the motion of the body. So as we outlined before, she is rotating 
counterclockwise. Now a handy trick to figure out how that might affect or make the cloth look might be to imagine a piece of string tied to the middle of her chest. Where would this string flow? Well, if she's turning and rotating this way, the string would be dragging backwards and almost wrapped around to behind her and it almost follows an opposite curve to her line of motion in her body because there is that delay with the weight being dragged in the opposite direction as she turns. Of course her clothing isn't a piece of string, it's much heavier and thicker than that but the general idea is the same. So we find first the areas that are going to be bearing the weight. Now if there were no physical interruption to the cloth after this point it would sort of be flowing in that counterclockwise direction sort of wrapping around the back of the body. And you can see that that does create on its own quite a, a, an elegant interpretation of the motion of the cloth. And uh, I would roughly add some lines here to indicate the pull that's happening from our anchor point apex between where the anchor point is sitting flat and then where it allows the cloth to drag and be loose. But the reality is it doesn't sit uninterrupted. There are other physical forms at play here and one is the leg. So I'm actually gonna select and delete all this area, I'll use the eraser too, that's uh, around the leg and behind the leg. And anything before we reach that leg is going to continue unimpeded as we initially sketched it in our rough blocking. But the leg itself is going to be acting as another one of these anchors. Let me just outline this roughly with my light orange again. I'm just going to roughly scribble in some shading here and you can see that that is where the anchor point would be for where the cloth is going to be sitting and pulled from. Think of it as gravity at play. It's going to be the areas that are pulling up against the cloth just falling to the ground. As such, we can be confident in drawing a line here that's going to show the cloth sort of interrupted. And now using this, we can think about how that anchor point and that effect of the cloth is going to affect the shape uh, and the lines of the rest of the outfit. Well, Initially, the cloth was sort of pulling back here unrestrained, whereas now it's going to be pulled back in because it's sort of re-anchored to a part of the body that's pulling it forward. So where the cloth was going to be going out unreservedly, it would actually pull in a bit. So the shape of the cloth itself changes quite a bit, but the motion would probably be even more intense because aside from the body itself having this counterclockwise rotation, the leg is even faster than the motion of the whole body because it's leading. So that means we can actually intensify the angle of the cloth flowing out here to be even more extreme, even more of a steep angle. After this knee anchor point, I would actually relax it a bit and, and allow it to sort of rejoin the mass of the rest of the dress, but it would do so with quite a lot of folds because it's gathered behind this knee here. So we need to allude to the fact that it's sort of gonna be stretching out and rejoining the mass of the rest of the dress by adding these lines that show that it's sort of creased up in there. So I'm gonna hide my anchor references here. They've sort of served their purpose, but you can start to see how quite clearly we're really starting to convey motion in the cloth uh, and it's really creating a lot of energy in, in the image. So now we actually have the bulk of the complicated part of the clothing done simply by focusing on the areas of anchor points and then creating the folds and flow from there. Another thing to remember is that the thinner and lighter the cloth, the smaller the folds and the more of them that there will be. So for example, if someone's wearing a thick leather jacket, there's going to be less folds than a very thin draped piece of chiffon pull across the body. So knowing that we can start to add lines throughout and you might wonder how uh, or where to draw these lines. A really easy way to think about it is by using references and using and picking and choosing some that you think will work with your image. So for example if I bring up Google Images here and just search cloth folds drawing there are loads of different ways of drawing cloth and folds but I recommend just sort of flicking through and just seeing what ones oh that's a thumbnail to my video. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> I unintentionally just Googled myself. You can flick through and see examples of uh, what different folds in clothing look like. And this is a really good one, actually. I've never seen this reference before, but it uses some techniques that I like to commonly use. So I'm just going to actually paste it in here and blow it up a bit. And this is a great reference image because you can see that it shows how you might draw the, the folds as they reach edges of 
cloth or clothing on the edge of the silhouette or when it reaches the end of the cloth itself and it folds over itself. And you actually see that what they've done here, I've actually done here in drawing the clothing that sort of comes in and then tucks into itself with a fold at the edge of the silhouette. So I'm gonna add a few more lines in here to show that the lines of the cloth sort of crease in and pull in towards the leg. I'm also gonna refine the side of this image here and draw some lines coming out from that anchor point, much in the way that I have some lines starting under the breasts where the anchor point sort of stops, sort of doing the same thing a bit here on the side of the leg just to show the cloth starting to uh, unfold a bit. So we've actually really only drawn the front of the torso. I'm going to follow the same sort of process when drawing the back uh, because you can see in our reference it actually flows over the shoulders almost like a cape. So I'm going to follow the exact same process I did for the main part of the torso dress but for the over the shoulders area that flows into a cape. And here is the result of my sketching the back area of clothing and you can see it has a very different line of motion to the front. I'm just going to use a different color here and break down a little bit of what I've done. Using the same method of knowing that the anchor point is up here on the shoulders and that the body is rotating in a counterclockwise way, we can know that from the shoulders the cloth is going to be pulled up in this direction towards the shoulders which are continuing to rotate. Which leaves the bulk of the back part of this cloak or uh, cape you might say sort of flowing behind the body here as we reach the bottom of the cloak I've actually had it dragged down in front of itself and be slightly pulled up like this for a few reasons one is that as the cloak turns there's going to be some air inside here that's going to create a bit of a pocket and perhaps lift and push up as our figure turns the other thing too is that the cloth is heavier and heavier as we reach the bottom because more and more weight is being pulled down so that does in my mind to justify having this area of cloth come down and fold over itself. The last thing to remember is that in this entire motion the back part of the cloak is going to be the slowest thing in her entire outfit to move and if you are actually to uh, figure out the direction that this bottom part of the cloak is facing it's actually sort of facing like this, this direction in the total opposite direction. So the bottom of her cloak is still almost in its original position because it's dragging so much. Not only because it's heaviest, but also because it's the end of the longest piece of the physical objects attached to our character here. So I really hope that's helped in explaining how I've gone about creating cloth for a moving figure and uh, we have two different types of cloth here again one's tightly wrapped and the other's really loose I'm actually going to move on to our other character in doing so I can hide my blocking reference and I'm going to create a new blocking reference for our male here once again Google Images is our friend so when you look up Frankenstein's monster this is what you get and I think this is the sort of aesthetic we're going for here because we're following the classic uh, style and outfits of our characters so I'm going to find a bunch of images that I like bring them over into Photoshop and then we can get started so you can see that the cloth of the suit jacket is obviously much thicker and the folds are sort of broader and there aren't as many of them. That's really useful in showing that the cloth isn't as soft as something as say his t-shirt or even his pants. That being said there aren't a huge amount of folds in his pants because they're anchored quite heavily on his uh, upper legs so there's not too many creases there. As for where the folds are pulling uh, you can see that the general motion in the arm here sort of wraps around almost like a candy cane and that's because his hand is actually upright. Naturally his hand position would be on the inside of his body like this with his knuckles by his side and then in that situation the cloth would be pretty much straight but because that has rotated counterclockwise the cloth is rotating with it. You can sort of see that the same is happening here with this arm as the arm is pulled up the cloth is stretching up with the motion of the arm here. And then last but not least we have the shirt underneath the jacket which has much more in the way of lines showing this motion to also show that the cloth is thin. So that was my approach in drawing the cloth of my Frankenstein's monster character and if I hide my reference here and zoom out we have the result which is two clothed figures and you can also see that the uh, weight and thickness and motion of this cloth is all different and suited to their individual needs. And that's the bulk of the work done. I had a lot of fun doing that and just doing all the blocking but the next part of course is the details so I hope you enjoy watching that being put together as well.
So there you go ladies and gentlemen, this is the result of my drawing the cloth and then shading it in and you can see that if I hide my shading, you can quite clearly see the lines of motion of the cloth, you can see where the, the cloth is a bit thicker or thinner and how it's wrapped around the body and where the anchor points of the cloth are, so on and so forth, and then I can add in the shading and of course I can just sort of bring down the opacity of the shading a little bit if I want just to sort of help uh, show a little bit more emphasis on those lines and the motion. I'm really happy with how this is looking and of course a huge part of that is Proko and the amazing image he gave me to work with. So a huge thank you to him. And of course, if you haven't checked out his video where he made the image, most of all, if you haven't subscribed to his YouTube channel, make sure to go do that now. Again, the link is on the screen and in the description. And if you are new to my channel and you came over from Proko's channel, welcome. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I do three videos a week, usually around art, animation, tutorials, and games, challenges, and competitions. I have loads of fun with art. And I really hope you consider clicking that subscribe button to join in the arty party. Thank you all so much for watching, ladies and gentlemen, and until next time, I'll see you later. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe to my channel for new content every week. If you want to support my work and get some goodies for yourself, head over to my store for archives, ebooks, digital brushes, video courses, and more. If you enjoyed this video, here's a link to another video you might like from this channel. And if you want even more, make sure to check out all my behind the scenes action on my vlog channel, Daily Jazza. Draw with Jazza is proudly sponsored by Adobe. Join the creative cloud today and get loads of incredible creative tools like Photoshop, Animate, Premiere Pro, and other apps for your computer or mobile device. That's it for now. Thanks for joining the arty party and until next time, I'll see you later.